Good morning. Welcome to the online services of the Vernon Church of Christ. We're glad you have made the decision to be with us again this morning and so thankful that you are here with us in the study of God's Word in the time of worship. Be sure to go get your Bible, pen and paper out, because you may want to take some notes, write down some scriptures, and go back and study them later. So again, thank you for being with us. As we get started this morning, let us begin with a word of prayer. Our Lord God, thank you for another day of life, another day to be on this earth. And thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. Thank you for this time of study, for this time of worship. And may we do things, Lord, that be pleasing to you in every way. Watch over us now and be with us all the way to the end. In your son's name we do pray. Amen. Holy Lord, most holy Lord, you alone are worthy of my praise. O holy Lord, most holy Lord, with all of my heart I see. Great are you, Lord, worthy of praise, holy and true. Great are you, Lord, most holy Lord. Holy Lord, most holy Lord, you alone are worthy of my praise, O oh Holy Lord, most holy Lord, with all of my heart I see. With my heart I sing. Great are you, Lord, worthy of praise, holy and true. Great are you, Lord, most holy. How is it that two people can sit down at the table with the same Bible at the same verse and begin reading and yet come up with two different interpretations? Why is that? How can that be? Can, is the Bible that hard to understand? Yet we know that we need to learn and from God's Word. We need to know what God has to tell us. But why is it sometimes that people do not understand the Bible alike? Man has come a long way in his education. We know a lot about mathematics. We know a lot about history, technology, computers, business, you name it. We're very well educated in these areas. But when it comes to the Bible, we're not so educated anymore. Most of the time, our grandparents know more than we know today, to this generation, about the Bible than we know. And why is that? Well, they studied it more. They thought more about it. It was first in their life in so many cases, and yet, what we do, we begin to put other things first, and we don't study as much as they did. They don't know much about computers, our grandparents don't, but yet they know about the Bible. They knew what was important. So what about this? Why is it that we don't understand the Bible alike? We can know the truth. In John chapter 8, verse 32, we find these words. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Here the Bible tells us that we can know the truth. And then we go to 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10. Look what Paul says to the Corinthian brethren. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Paul says to them, I want you to be of the same mind. I want you to be of the same judgment. I want you to speak the same thing. I don't want any divisions. When Paul says this, he knows that we can be one. That we can take a Bible, two Bibles, and sit across one another the same verse, and we can have an understanding of what that verse means. Paul knew that, and we know it as well. But in America, we have some problems when it comes to our knowledge of the Bible. Here are some recent stats about our knowledge 
of the Bible that comes to me in America. 12% of Americans read their Bibles every day, and the average time of reading is nine minutes. Only 12% read it every day. 57% of Americans read their Bibles only four times a year. 57% of those between the ages of 18 and 28 never read their Bibles. And 31% of Americans believe the Bible is too difficult to understand. Isn't that sad? Is there any wonder that we have such a low knowledge of the Word of God? We simply have laid it aside and we're not studying it the way that we should study it. Again, what happens? We have many within religion they are relying upon the traditions of their parents. They're taking what their parents said, what their parents believed, and they're adapting that to their life. Well, that may be good or not so good. Or it may be that many take the view of the preacher. Whatever the preacher says, well, he's got to be right. He's the preacher. Well, that may not be correct either. Again, it is our responsibility as individuals, as Christians, to know the Word of God, to know what it says. But why doesn't this happen? Why do we not know the Word of God? Well, first of all, it could be that there are individuals who don't want to understand. They simply just don't want to. Well, they know what the Scriptures say so many times, but they willfully forget. Look what 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 says. For this they willfully forget, that by the Word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. People forget about that. They think about God. Well, God will never destroy his creation. God is a God of love, and, and he would never send anybody to hell because of sins in their life. Well, what about the scriptures? We know that it happened. In the flood, it happened, and only eight souls were saved. What did God do? Well, he got enough of man's wickedness, and he cleansed the earth. Again, people sometimes willfully forget those things and other things when it comes to the Bible. Why? Well, because it contradicts their life. It contradicts the life. You see, we're all sinners. And as sinners, we don't always like to be told what to do. And yet that's what the Bible has given to us is a book of reading. It's God's commands telling us what we are to do and what we are not to do. And what happens, the Bible exposes our sins. Well, again, we don't like that. But yet... We don't want to be willfully forgetting the commandments of God. Look what Christ said in John 3, verse 20. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. I don't want to do that, one might say. Don't tell me what to do. It's my life. Don't be judging me. But what does the Bible do? It exposes our sins. It brings light to our error, to our wickedness sometimes. I remember a preacher once, he gave the illustration many times over the, over the years. He said, you got a big rock and you roll that rock over and all these bugs start to scramble. Why? Because of the light. They have been exposed to the light. Well, when we are exposed to the light, the word of God, sometimes we don't like it and we scramble and it makes us nervous. We don't need to do that. Well, why is it that some individuals just can't see the Bible of light? Well, they don't want to. They don't want to understand the Word of God because it exposes their own weaknesses. Another thing that may be an answer as to why we don't understand the Bible of light is that we clutter our mind with other things. That's not good, to clutter our mind with things and sort of choke out the Word of God. In Matthew 13, we find where Christ gives the parable of the soils, how the seed is sown. And look what he says about one seed in Matthew 13 and verse 22. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. It is possible that a Christian can become unfruitful. We can become a child of God and begin, begin producing fruit, but then we get choked out. And many times it's the things that are not sinful that choke out the Word of God. It may be family, it may be finances, it may be work, it may be recreation. Many times these things come into our life and we're choked and God doesn't come first. We don't want that to happen. These are all good things, but yet we let them come into our life and, and choke us and we become unfruitful as Christians, then they have done harm. 
I know a lady once, she was talking about her faithfulness. She at one time was a very faithful Christian. But over the years, she had become unfaithful. And in visiting with her and talking with her, she said, you know, we work six days a week. And Sunday is the only day that we have off, and that's our family day. And that's what we're going to do on Sunday. We're going to have family time. Well, there's nothing wrong with family time. What has happened, her family now has begun to choke away, choke the truth, choke her out of the Word of God. Again, something that's so good, and yet it can cause trouble. Again, our minds can become cluttered with other things. Our lives can become choked. Another reason why maybe we don't always understand the Bible alike is people have not learned to rightly divide the Word of God. They haven't learned this. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, Paul says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Some versions say, Study to show yourself approved unto God. Either one is great. But what we fail to realize sometimes, we don't study. Well, we may think we'll read a verse here or there, but that's not really studying and meditating on God's word. Many fail to realize that when it comes to study and rightly dividing the Word of God, that that blank page that divides the Old Testament from the New Testament many times is overlooked. They don't realize that there's an old law and a new law, that there's an old covenant and a new covenant, that there's an Old Testament and a New Testament, and things start running together, and they don't realize that. Well, that's the error that some make sometimes when it's coming to rightly dividing the Word of God. How many times in the past, I never remember a few years ago, when there was a lot of commotion going on about the, these uh, commandments, the Ten Commandments, the statues that were on government property. Oh, they were trying to get them removed and go here and there. Oh, there was a movement that took place at that time. A lot of signs went up in people's yards and in storefront windows, and they said something like this, keep the Ten Commandments. Well, really, are we to keep the Ten Commandments? Again, there's not rightly dividing the word of truth, the word of God. Now, we don't keep the Ten Commandments, but we're under a new law, a new law which we live today. So we've got to understand how to divide the word of God. It also helps to know who's talking. When we read the verses in the Bible, you know, they're all inspired. Every word that's in the Bible was said. But we've got to be careful who we're listening to because we could be listening to the wrong person. Even the Bible talks of individuals who were speaking error. What about the old devil? He speaks on different occasions in the Bible. We certainly wouldn't want to listen to him. Or what about a false teacher? The Bible speaks to them. We certainly don't want to uh, listen to a false teacher. Again, we've got to know the Word of God so that we can rightly divide. Know who's doing the talking. Is it Jesus doing the talking? Is it his apostles doing the talking? That's going to make a difference when it comes to rightly dividing the Word of God. Look at Psalms chapter 14 and verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. We don't want to listen to a fool, do we? No, we do not. A person who says there's no God, don't want to listen to that individual. We've got to know how to rightly divide the word of God. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Here's warning. Be careful of false prophets or false teachers. If you don't know the word of God, you may listen to what they have to say and you may follow their error. We don't want to do that. So that could be another reason why some have an understanding, a lack of understanding of the scriptures. And we got to know, rightly divide the word of God. Another thing about this, sometimes we come to the word of God with prejudice. And we can't do that. Many come, when it comes to Bible study, they come to the Bible with their minds already made up. They see the Word of God only one way, and, and that's it. They don't come with open mind. They might just learn something. They might just be wrong. That's why we've got to study with an open mind, with an open heart. When it comes to this study, you know, we have two people studying, and when well, they come to a different conclusion, well, both can't be right. It's possible that both could be wrong, but they both can't be right. Again, we've got to come to the Word of God with no prejudice. Listen to what the Word of God has to say. There are two words we need to understand when it comes to the Bible. One is the word exegesis, which means taking from the text its meaning. And there's another word, eisegesis, and that's reading into the text one's ideas. 
The eyes of Jesus is dangerous. Because we look at the Word of God and we insert our thoughts into it. Well, here's what it means. We want to have the exegesis and take from the Word of God what the Lord is trying to tell us. And when that happens, our eyes can be opened. I've studied with a lot of people. There's some individuals that when you study with them and you just look at the Word of God, you see their eyes are open and you understand what the Lord is saying. And that's a good thing. But there's some I've studied with, they come with this preconceived idea, well, this is what it says, and they're not going to accept anything else. Well, that's sad, but you have individuals that will do that. Again, we can't come to the Word of God with prejudice. When Christ taught, he taught in parables many times because they were easy to understand. There were a couple of parables that the apostles came to him and said, can you tell us the meaning of this? But for the most part, they were very easy, and the people understood those. Well, our teaching needs to be the same way today. It needs to be simple and easy to understand. And the Bible, it has some difficult parts, but yet from the standpoint of being certain parts easy to understand, we can take that. Look what Christ says in Matthew 13, beginning in verse 13 through 15. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says... Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their ears, or with their heart, and turn, so that I should heal them. He spoke in parables. There were those that accepted them and those that didn't. But for those that did, their ears were open. Their eyes were open as well. For the first time, they really understood what Christ was trying to get across to them. And then look what he says in Matthew 13 and verse 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Not everyone has a closed mind. You're going to find those individuals who are wanting to learn, who are wanting to study, who are wanting to know truth. And we need to be there to help them do this. And make the word of God as simple as possible. We go back to John 8 verse 32. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. We can know that. We can know the truth. It can make us free. And look what is said about Amos. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Again, unless you're in agreement, you're not going to walk beside someone. The Lord wants us to be in agreement. He wants us to know the truth. He wants us to be one, that no divisions take place. And maybe this lesson here this morning can help us to achieve that, to come to a knowledge of God's Word that can help us, such as the plan of salvation. You know, there are many individuals out there who teach a different plan than what we find in the Bible. You have those who say a sinner's prayer. Just say a prayer. Well, there's a lot of commercials on TV these days. All you got to do is say the prayer, then call this number, you don't find that in the scriptures. You'll find individuals who'll say, well, come to the mourner's bench and, and there you can be saved. You don't find that in the scriptures either. What you find is God's one plan of salvation. We've got to believe in his son, John 3, and verse 16. We are to repent of our sins, Luke 13, and verse 3. We are to confess the great name of Christ, Romans 10, 9, and 10. And we are to be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins, Acts 2, and verse 38. And live a faithful life thereafter. Revelation 2 and verse 10. That's the commandments of the Lord. That's easy to understand. God is not going to make the plan to save man so difficult that we cannot understand it. It's just that simple. Or maybe as a Christian, you can see that things have come into your life and choking out the Word of God. God is no longer first in your life. Let us help you. Let us help you in getting your life right. If you want to become a Christian, if you need prayers, the number's at the bottom of the screen. Give us a call and we'll get with you as soon as possible and talk about this most important decision because it is a very important decision to become a Christian, live a Christian life. Or you might go to our webpage and you'll find other information there about uh, verses, other sermons that are relative to this. Again, be sure to check that out as well. Again, thanks for being with us today. And hopefully the lesson will help us to understand God's word better. At this time, let us close with a word of prayer. Our Lord and God, our Father, we thank you for your word, for what it means to us. 
But thank you, Lord, that we have the ability to learn and to study and apply it to our lives. And may we never neglect your word, because if we neglect your word, we're neglecting you. Watch over us and be with us to the end. Be with our sick and be with them. Thank you for your son. For us in his name we pray. No. for the Lord's Supper, we'll be reading Luke chapter 22, 19 and 20. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Let us pray for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son Jesus and giving of his body. May our minds go back to the cross, the suffering that he did there for us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Again, let us bow as we give thanks for the fruit of the vine. Again, our Father, we thank you for Jesus' blood. He shed on the cross for us. May our minds go back to the cross for every drop he shed. For it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. We're also commanded to give back on the first day of the week as we have prospered this week. Acts 20 verse 7 says, Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message unto midnight. Let us give thanks. We well, thank you, Lord, for every blessing you send our way. And be with us, Lord, as we give back to your work of the church. We do so with a cheerful heart. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Soldiers of Christ, arise and put your armor on. Strong in the strength which God supplies. Strong in the strength which God supplies.
supplies through his beloved Son. Strong in the Lord of hosts and in his mighty power, who in the strength of Jesus trusts, who in the strength of Jesus trusts is more than a conqueror. Stand then in his great might, with all his strength endued. But take to arm you for, take to arm you for the fight. But take to arm you for the fight, the panoply of God. That having all things done. Thank you for being with us again today. I hope the words I've been said will help us and benefit us when it comes to being faithful Christians and living the life God would have us to live. If you can, be with us at 1045 at the church building this morning. We have two services, one at 930 and one at 1045. Of course, you can be with us at 1045 if you can. And 5 o'clock in the afternoon, we have our evening service. And then also Wednesday evening at 7 at the church building. Hope you can be with us, any of these, all of these, if you can. Again, what a pleasure it is to be with you. At the end of our program, be sure to look at our sick list. We have those there that, that need our prayers in a very sick condition. Be praying about them, those who are giving their care. You can also go to our website, and there you'll find additional announcements as well, our bulletins and other sermons you can listen to. Again, a lot of information there for you. Again, thanks for being with us. Until next time, hope you have a great week, and may God bless.